Hey guys, Smiley's here, bringing you a Pokemon Showdown battle uh, in the UU tier, actually. Uh, I made this team with my buddy Super Effective 87 so you guys should go check him out. He makes pretty good stuff, so I would highly recommend checking him out. Uh, I'll quickly go over the team. Uh, I got an Agility 3 Attacks Empoleon, which unfortunately does not get to do too much work in this battle, but it is still very powerful. The Hydro Pump does a lot of damage to anything it doesn't resist. And it's got Ice Beam Grass, not for coverage. Uh, I got Hitmontop, which is pretty much the standard Rapid Spinning Defensive Hitmontop. Uh, I got the standard Defensive Gligar set, and I have a Special Defensive Roserade with Spikes. I have the Porygon 2 that I mainly used with Special Attack and HP. It's really good. Uh, it, it takes hits really well, and it's a great Chandelure counter, which is pretty much why I have it on here. And I have a Scarf Hair Cost, because it's pretty much a beast. On his team, threats include Zapdos, because if it's Specs, it can do a lot of damage. If it's defensive, it can take hits really well. It's just very versatile, very good Pokemon. And Nidoking, because it hits like a truck and has amazing coverage with that sheer force. And then Victini, which is uh, a destroyer of my life, basically. <laughs> Recreate just hits so hard against like everything, so... Yeah, so without further ado, let's get on with the battle. I'm not really worried about his other three Pokemon, because uh, my team can pretty much handle them. He's going to lead off with Mew, and I'm going to lead off with him on top. And I'm fearing the Psychic, so I'm going to go ahead and switch out into Porygon 2, because it's my, it is my best switch in to Psychic, uh, besides Empoleon, I suppose. But he Will-O-Wisps, and since I traced his Synchronize, I actually do get the burn on him as well, which is nice. I hear he taunts, as I'm just going to go for a couple tri-attacks. I don't know why he taunted. I really don't. I, I can't think of why he would taunt a Porygon 2. Maybe he predicted another switch. I don't even know. Uh, but he's going to go for Stealth Rocks. I'm going to go for tri-attacks. And he's going to be at 8% and not going to want to take another tri-attack. And he reveals his last move, which is U-Turn. And so I know this Mew is not a threat at all. So I go for the tri-attack, like I said. And I do score the Paralysis on the Azumar, which is great because that's going to force him to switch out, and he's going to go ahead and go into his Nidoking as I recover on the switch. Now I know I can take any one hit from this thing, so I'm going to stay in and go for the Ice Beam. Uh, unfortunately, I do score a crit here, uh, which did matter because if I did not score the critical hit, I would have had to play around that a lot more, and I don't really don't know what I would have done. I, I haven't calc it. I'll probably place a calc on screen for that one. But he's going to go into Scrafty because it's his best switch in here. But fortunately, I have the pretty much hard counter and hit him on top. Uh, with the Intimidate boost, that Dragon Dance is pretty much useless. And seeing the Dragon Dance um, makes me think that he's probably Moxie and not Shedskin. So if I want to get status on it later, that'll be nice. Uh, I do Rapid Spin the Rocks away on the switch. But I probably should have went with the Stone Edge or the Toxic, as you will see later in the battle. Uh, but I go in the obvious Rosa Raid. And he does predict that and go for the Heat Wave very nicely. Unfortunately, I can't take a heatwave with pretty much anything else, so I'm forced to sacrifice a raid. So I can get a switch into Porygon 2 and hope it can live a heatwave. Can it live the heatwave? Yes, it can with 4%, and I do recover off the damage. Um, uh, I ran a calc with Super Effective 87, and he concluded that it is a Specs one, so that is good to know. I'm going to recover as he switches into Mew. Unfortunately, the burn is not going to be able to finish him off as he's going to live with 1%, and my best move here is to just recover. Uh, I only gain like 10% health, but there's no point in attacking since the burn's going to finish him off. And since he outspeeds me, I really can't prevent him from getting up Stealth Rocks. I was going to go in Victini, and I do live the V-Create very easily. It only does 54%, and that's making me think that he's probably Scarfed or something. And I do score the Paralysis again with a Tri-Attack, which again was kind of good for me. Or really bad for him, I guess. Uh, because... I mean, it's going to make this Victini pretty much useless. And I do go through the recover there. I don't really know why. I wasn't really fishing for paralysis. I just this kind of made a stupid play. But I get lucky and do get the paralysis, but I'm not going to attempt it again. Uh, I decide to finish him off with a tri-attack. But I still think the Victini one did not matter as much as the Nido King one. But it still mattered. He's going to go into Scrafty again. That's pretty much all he could do. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Mata because it's pretty much the hard counter. He's going to stay in and start setting up some more. And since I know he doesn't have Shed Skin, uh, well, I don't know that, but he probably doesn't have Shed Skin because he has Dragon Dance, I'm going to go for the Toxic. Now here, I did not notice he had a Choppleberry, or else I might have stayed in and just went for 
close combat, but that would have actually proven to be bad, as you will see later in the match. Uh, he's going to go for the Ice Punch, predicting my switch into Gligar, which was, I guess, kind of obvious. Uh, but for some reason, I th think he's told me he misclicked Dragon Dance, and not he didn't go for Ice Punch. So, I might have lost another Pokemon in the process, but that wouldn't have really changed the outcome of the battle, because Toxic would have taken him out. But I'm going to sack Gligar to Heat Wave, and since... I'm at the exact amount of health that I survived the heat wave at before. I know I can live another one, so I'm just going to recover again. If I had discharged, it would have been helpful, as you will see in the next turn, because the Azumarill lives with 1%, which is very unfortunate. Is able to get a good chunk off of the waterfall, and after I recover, I will not be able to survive burn and waterfall, so I'm forced to just finish him off with Ice Beam, and Porygon 2 finally goes down. It was a key player in this match. It just, it just destroyed that guy's team. So he's going to Zapdos, which I know is Specs now, but I'm thinking I'm okay because I have Heracross's Stone Edge as long as I hit. No, it does not take him out, and I'm like, oh crap, I've lost. And he... I have to hope that I live, Thunder... I live Thunderbolt with him on top. Do I live it? Yes, I do with 15%, and I'm able to take him out with a close combat for the victory. Yeah, guys, if I would have stayed in with him on top on that Scrafty and taken damage, I would have lost. Um... It would have been a lot help, a lot more helpful if I had gone for the Toxic or the Stone Edge on that Zapdos instead of spinning away the rocks, as you will, as you notice, because that would have gotten a little bit of extra damage that I needed for the Stone Edge from Heracross to take him out. But anyways, that was a good battle, Bunny of Gold. Uh, if you guys enjoyed, please leave a like rating, comment with anything you want to say, and subscribe if you want to see more content. I'm sorry I haven't uploaded this frequently. I have been playing a lot of RuneScape. Uh, if you guys want to add me on RuneScape, my username is iSmileysI, I, just like my YouTube channel, so it's pretty easy to remember. Uh, I leave my private chat on pretty much, so you guys can feel free to message me and maybe we'll play together sometime. But anyways, this has been Smileys. I've rambled on long enough. Rate, comment, sub, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day, guys.